Hi everybody and welcome to part two where we're going to make our own journal. But before I get into the journal we're going to make, I just wanted to show you this really quick other journal project that I'm working on. I went to the thrift store yesterday and I found this really cool beat up purse. It's just got kind of a leather corded strap and the button's missing but it has a snap on it. And I had also just been at Michael's and I bought this journal. I'm sure you guys have seen them. I think it was only about three dollars with these little Victorian ladies on them. I thought, you know what, I want to make this into a garden journal and I have the Tim Coffee flowers. So I'm going to add a Tim Coffee flower right on top of her, just like that. Maybe use a little bit of that triple glaze on the whole journal cover because I want to use it outside with some Mod Podge just to protect it from the weather. And I'm going to grunge up this little purse and this is going to be my garden journal. And I'm gonna take it along with me. We have a community gr uh, garden that's not at our home, but it's not far from here where we plant our big, huge vegetable garden. And there's a place there to sit and read and write and sketch and draw. So I'm just gonna bring my journal along with me. And I just thought that was just the cutest little alteration Cute little fix, and I love the fact that I found this leather purse. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, so we're going to get started on our journal today. Now the kind of journal we're going to make today is going to be whatever you want it to be. It can be a, a gratitude journal, um, uh, just a journal for writing thoughts, a couple's journal, whatever you want. That's entirely up to you. But I'm just going to give you some tips of the kinds of journals that I really like. Now, I showed some of these in part one, so I'm not going to go into them in any depth. But this was the um, pain one. And so you can get a close-up view here. It was just some pages of um, a phone book painted and then just bound together with holes here and some twine stuck through. So that was this one, and I mod podge the cover, and it has just such a cool feel to it. I, these kind of journals for me, for an everyday journal, although I showed you all of those purchased ones and gift, that were mostly gifts, the ones that I tend to write in the most are the ones that I find that are the most organic and feel, have more texture to them, and are just kind of, I don't know, kind of grunged up. I can just toss them in my purse, toss them in the car, I tend to use those the very most. This little guy here, um, it was uh, Marion, um, oh, Crafting with Marion. Uh, she did this. I'll put the link in the down bar. This actually is Turner made this one. And all it is is a watercolor paper. And this is the hard uh, chipboard that um, comes in the back of the watercolor paper pad. And so what you do is just run this through a cuddle bug folder. And then it's just distressed with a whole bunch of Tim Holtz Distress inks. And then just a simple binding in the back. And then these are the pages from the watercolor um, pad. In my journal like this, I think I went through this thing in a month. It had everything in it. Notes, lists, journaling, thoughts, ideas. I love this. And this was great. I always had it in my purse when I was sitting in the car. If I was thinking of some an idea for a project, I would jot it down or needed to make a list for something and so Turner made one with me and so this is his. So even a child can make these ones. Can't even describe it but the organic feel of them is just what makes you want to have them in your hand. This one, well let me show you this one first. This was another one. This was, I think her name is Samantha Kyra and she shows how to take one of these um, notebooks that you get at the dollar store. You take all the paper out of them and you use manila folders if you want an art journal because it's such a heavy weight paper. So you can pretty much do anything, gesso, glue, paint, whatever on these journals. So I just only started doing a little bit of artwork in these ones. But um, this is a great, hearty, sturdy, sturdy journal if you want to make an art journal. And this one is the Remains of the Day journal. Love this. Love, love, love gotta say all-time favorite I took her online class well worth it and um, this one again is just a whole bunch of recycled things that you have and so we documented all that it holds pictures papers just a wonderful wonderful thank you card tucked in here and it's just used with a whole bunch of stuff that you have here in your in your stash 
So I love, love, love this one. I've added to it. I added a new signature. These sections are called signatures when you make a journal like that. So I added a new signature here because I knew I was going to fill this one up. I absolutely have to say love this. So it's just an all-purpose journal. It sits by my bed. If I go on a trip, it com <coughs> excuse me, it comes with me. And yeah, so that one. So that's what we're going to do today. So what I'm going to take inspiration from all of these journals. And also, I really firmly believe there is way more paper on the planet than we need. You don't need to buy anything for this journal. So I keep in my stash a kind of like a, a little bit of an ephemera box. Um, let me just grab it here. Okay, so my box is just one of these, you know, cardboard boxes. And I just keep it in the closet. It is just chock full of different things. This was a piece of cheap scrapbook paper but what I left about it is each one of these little shapes is like a stamp a postage stamp an old sunbeam cook book uh, manual very old this was my envelope from Tim coffee and my card so I'd like to use that because even though he wrote on that side there's a nice blank space there for me to journal and this is just full of labels and stuff the and once this gets full, then I don't save anymore until I need some more. This is a map of St. Albert, an old, old map. So, you know, when you're cleaning out your junk drawers, this is what you, you just keep all this stuff. My husband is a graphic designer, as some of you know, so he's got some old um, graphic books that you can just cut sections out and use for journaling. So our journal is going to be made from... All of this upcycled items. So when we upcycle all of this stuff and all of this ephemera, we're turning into beautiful art creations and beautiful um, journals for ourselves. And it's just with stuff that would normally be considered garbage. Your whole idea of what is art changes when you start making these. It's just so much fun. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to start with as my base for my journal. Okay, I got this really, we have the coolest, it's like a Salvation Army thrift store that's really close to our house. And I often pop in there. I love it there. Um, and they have a section where they have a whole bunch of stationery in the back. So I found this kind of file folder thing. Loved it. And it's got, you know, the binder clips. Let me turn this around so you can see these kind where you just can punch holes and add stuff on. And I thought, oh, loving this for my journal. So this is going to be what I'm going to start with for the basis of my journal. What I'm going to do is cut this down. This is too big for what I would want it to be. And I'm going to make two of them. And unfortunately, the bottom part won't have these clips, but that's okay. It'll just be a different journal. But what I'm going to do is make two, and I'm going to give one, one of them away to you guys. So... So if you want to be eligible to win this, all you have to do is follow me on my blog and leave a comment here below. That's it. So I'll put the link to my blog below. So anyway, this is going to be our canvas. Love it. It's very, very sturdy. I'm really excited to get started. I'm going to also incorporate some Tim Coffee fabric in here. We've got all these. And still have two of these flowers left. Got some really vintage things my mom gave me. So we're just going to play. It's a great day. Nobody's home. I'm still in my jammies. And um, it's just a great day to play. Okay, I want to show you what I've gone and done so far. So I cut that ledger thing in half. And then I took this Tim Coffee fabric. I've got to tell you, this fabric is awesome and when you add mod podge to it or mod podge it's just awesome and i've left the edges right there so i split the fabric up i'll show you here on this one that i'm doing for you guys so basically i took some strips of fabric um added mod podge to the bottom here i wanted to leave the binding that they had on the thing there i like that so just added it here just kind of smoosh it all around, cover the whole front of the cover. 
it's neat when you can add different textures like fabric and things like that mixed in with paper, which is where they get mixed media from, I guess. So I like that fact that the edges are freed. So just kind of match it up with that uh, rim of the margin there. And then just apply it down. You can use a brayer if you want. And I'm saving every little piece of remnant of this Tim Coffee uh, fabric. It's like gold. Don't want to waste one little bit. So I'm just going to keep going like that and um, just adhering the fabric like so. Okay, I'm now going to make a sort of a label for or a title for my journal. And I want to keep this sort of not too bulky because, again, we're going to be putting this in our purse, throwing it in our bag, just tossing it over our shoulder and taking it with us wherever we go. So I've got the Melody Ross. It is a chip art embossing thing. So what it uh, does, it comes with um, different size um embossing letters. So this one is the sparrow set. And this was the medium size one. I believe there was a robin and then another chickadee or something. I love the box. So what I've done, I started, I want to put my journal or my, I think I'll put my story on it. So you take your letter. So I'm going to go get the Y and you pop it into this thing in the back. And it just clicks in. You probably heard the click. So there's the Y. And then I'm going to put it right beside. And I find you're supposed to use heavy duty um, chipboard. But I find Fiber One cereal boxes are really good. So you spritz it with a little water as you can see there. And I just kind of rubbed it in so the water soaks into the cardboard a bit. And then you just apply your letter down. Uh, she uses a rubber mallet, but this is the one from the Making Memories toolkit that I'm sure you bought years and years ago. So it's not rubber, it's metal, so it's loud. So I'll just give it a few taps. I found three or four. And there you have the word my. Can you see it there? And then when it dries, it's like, I don't know if you can see that it's um, debossed or embossed right into the... Uh, cardboard very cool and then you can use some different treatments on it and spray it with glimmer mist and all of that so I'll get that finished right now so there you can see it I've uh, gone ahead and ran it through the big shot with the top note die cut and so that's just gonna sort of sit on there and I'll just play around and grunge it up and I'll do another one for the other cover Okay, what I've done now is I added some blue, pretty blue acrylic paint, which picks up the blue in this journal so nicely. And if you can see, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but I think it sort of it went down into the crevices of the letter, so it says my story. And then I just took a, sort of a tan paint, put it on my fingers, and just rubbed it around on the cardboard. And now I'm just going to take some Distress Ink, Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and just kind of go over the whole thing a little bit so that the title kind of pops out. I have my label here. I have a little collection of old jewelry, and sometimes I'll pick up old belts and make bracelets with them, and then there's another piece left. So what I'm going to do is I attach with my, my Big Bite two little brads here, and then you can see the belt on the back of the label. I took my craft knife, just slid across the binding there, slipped the belt in. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it again on this side. But what it's going to create for me, other than also a very cool look with the leather band across, on the inside flap cover, there'll be a place to stick things in and to hang my pen or pencil or whatever else. So you can see that there. Okay, I've got both covers completed on both journals. This is mine, the one I'm going to keep. This is my story. And I found a Seven Gypsies, um, one of those uh, journal bands, I think they're called. So I've wrapped that around, same purpose, to tuck things behind. And the one that I made for you guys has the belt, leather belt strap. Now the next part 
it's the most time consuming, but the most fun and the most creative. There, you cannot make a mistake. The sky's the limit. Do whatever you want. So my basic rule of thumb is I first go and measure uh, what the biggest piece I want it to be. So I don't want my sheets to be bigger. So for this book, five and a half by eight and a half is what I want the size to be, which ends up being exactly the size of a letter sheet, eight and a half by 11 cut in half. So I thought for this one, I'm going to try to have eight to 10 sheets per page where I can punch holes on them and stick them down and then lay it like that. So probably eight to 10 and then maybe an envelope here. I'm not sure, but that's my plan. So that'll give me a nice big thick thick journal. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Then once you get all of your sheets collected, a while ago I found these labels. Um, I think they're Martha Stewart. Let's see. Yeah, they were at Walmart and you can see they were a dollar and there was 12 of them. I know you buy them and you think, what am I going to do with this stuff? But it's such a good deal, I have to buy it. Well, this is what they're great for. So you've got a sheet like this, for example, a music sheet. And although we love the vintage music in the background, if we're going to journal, there's no place to journal on this page until you add one of these cool labels right in the center. And voila, you have an instant journal mat on your page. So that's what I'm going to use these for throughout the book. And then we'll go on and embellish from there. For example, you may take some labels or mailing labels, or you can go to your post office and get some airmail stickers, some stamps, whatever you want, and just add that to your page. So I've got, here's one right here. And this will make a great label on my page, and maybe I'll just put it sort of like that. And then that page is pretty much done for my journal. And then I can flip it over and work on this side. I can stamp or whatever I want. So that's the process. Find a, uh, it's a blank page. And I'm making this into a little bit of a pocket here. So I just took a glue stick just to kind of adhere it, just for placement. And then what I might do is either use my Sew Crafty tool and stitch down the sides or use my sewing machine, whichever I feel like doing. Just add a bit more dimension to the page. So you can do that as well. Okay, so here's the finished journal. This is the garden one where I just added the Tim Coffee flower. That's really all I did to that. Oh, and then I think I just took some paint and just kind of did the edges in kind of a peachy paint. And this is that little wallet purse that I'm going to carry it around. And it just says on there, learn. And I grunged it up and sanded it up and just threw some lace on, glimmer misted it, and added that um, peachy paint. So there's the garden journal and pencil ready to go. So here are the two upcycled journals that I was working on. The one at the top with the black strap is mine, and this is the one I'm giving away right here. So I'll quickly go through this, and remember this is a very organic journal using upcycled materials, and it's just very grungy and awesome, and you can just fill it up with whatever you want. You can kick around with it. Don't worry about it. It's been Mod Podge, and I've got the beautiful Tim Coffee fabric on it. And also, I made a tab out of the Tim Coffee paper to coordinate with the journal, so I love how that turned out. So, like I mentioned before, the belt here is to slide things in through there. You can clip a pin on there. And then I just went through little tabs where you can label. You can use this for journaling or a photo mat, whatever you want. These are so fun to make. Again, more tabs here. This is a very vintage, this is about 50 years old, this fabric flower. And just some more for journaling. Every other page has lines so that you can actually journal. This is from an old, old cookbook. And then just a journal mat or a photo mat, whatever you want. And then here is some... Um, just a little pocket made out of 
craft cardstock and numbers, and this is vintage fabric. This is one of those uh, bags, those vintage bags with a photo mat on top. And then some more lines for journaling. And vellum pockets. You can put a see-through photo in there. And same on the other or right on it. Again, more lines. This one, I used one of those um, business envelopes and it's see-through. You can put st ticket stubs. I use graphic 45 paper for the tab here. Uh, this is a vintage picture postcard. I made a pocket out of it. And so as you can see, it's just a whole bunch of yummy, yummy, yummy ephemera just throughout the whole journal. And it was tons of fun to make, and they are tons of fun to use. I love them. So if you want an opportunity to win this one, I want you to go to the link to my blog at the bottom and uh, follow my blog if you don't already do so and then leave a comment on this video um, so that's how i'm going to choose is from the comments on this video another graphic 45 tab this says sketches and i made it into a pocket so you could use that if you're sketching cards this is from the tim holtz new paper um pack uh, i can't remember what it is but that's a piece from there and it's got lines more journaling lift that up journal just spots to write notes, whatever you want. Maps, more journaling, journaling, and it just goes on and on and on. These pictures here are from a gra an artist graphic magazine. These yummy apples and a journaling spot or photo mat. So this is how you make these. There's, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Again, there's another business envelope with a see-through window. And some more of that Tim Holtz paper. And another pocket for ideas. And then on the back it just has a little label where you can put your name. So mine is very, very similar. Just mine has these tabs here. And in that one I use brads. So um, mine lifts this way. That's the only difference. So please don't forget to enter to win. And thanks a lot for watching. And happy journaling everybody. Bye.